So I was in therapy and only like my husband and two of my good friends knew for over a year. And it's not that I was ashamed of it or I was keeping like this huge secret. I just needed to reserve some space for myself and keep that space like safe and sacred while I was going through the motions. Hi, I'm Janae. I'm currently 31 years old. I am African American. I live in Michigan currently. I am from the South, Memphis, stand up. And I'm a Christian that goes to therapy. So I just want to put this out to, to, to top it off. Um, you don't have to go to therapy because stuff in your life is going awry and you're trying to sort through devastating traumas. That's definitely a part of it. But that's not even why I started to go to therapy. The initial reason that I started to go to therapy was twofold. One was because I had reached a certain spot in my entrepreneurial career and I felt like I had hit a ceiling and it was just like, how do I, how do I get out of this ceiling? And I know the reason that I feel like blocked or stuck is because of some stuff that's happening in my mind and in my heart that I'm blind to and I just can't see. And I want somebody outside of my family, outside of my friends, outside of, you know, my husband that could give me some perspective. Um, so that was part of it. And another part of it was just that I was going through some things um, emotionally with things that had happened in my life and with uh, my in-laws. And I was just trying to make sense of it all. So I know for me, I was in a really good place, great place when I started going to therapy. There were some blind spots, some stuff that I didn't understand, some emotions that I kind of wanted to sort through, but I wasn't what you, what most people probably imagine when, when, when people go to therapy. Now, with that being said, if you are somebody on kind of my side of the spectrum or the very other side of the spectrum, therapy is so beneficial. Like, Therapy is therapeutic, right? So, um, therapy is so beneficial. And for me, what I've been noticing, especially this last month, things that I didn't necessarily go to therapy for are being addressed. And it's, whew, these last couple weeks, we've been digging deep. And if you are following me on Instagram, pause for the calls, follow your girl on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, then you already know, like this last month or so, I have been emotional during therapy. <sighs> Even though today was a very, very emotional day in therapy, um, I just, I still can't believe all of this random stuff that just kept coming up and coming out. And just, oh, wow. Um, but I am very grateful, so grateful. Everything is connected. And I know this, and this is kind of what I, I, I say to you guys, the people who are a part of my you know, inner circle on my you know, email list and in my free member community. Every, like, it's all connected. Like, we don't segregate like our dating lives with our financial lives, with our lives, with our friends and our family, with our career and our beauty. Like, it's not segmented in a way where it never crosses, it doesn't entangle. In fact, everything is connected. And you will be so surprised to, to see how, you know, how you feel about your um, hands affects how much money you are making or um, how you feel about yourself is affecting how you are showing up in the world, even though those are, you know, two lines that are easier to kind of correlate, but you will be surprised. And the last few weeks, I know it's really been the Holy Spirit, 
Um, it's some things that I've been connecting. Well, my therapist has have, been helping me connect that I never could see and I never understood. Now, I did say that I'm a Christian and I go to therapy. And here's the thing. Um, there are so many, so many scriptures throughout the Bible, especially in Proverbs, that talks about getting wise counsel, getting wise counsel. So from that perspective, I think therapy is a biblical thing. However, the uh, imperative word is wise. Not all counsel is wise counsel. And that works both in like the psychotherapy, therapy realm, and in the church realm. Because there's some people who are uh, counseling in churches and they are not wise counsel because they are not living up to uh, the purpose and the gifting and the anointing that God has placed on their life. But with me, there were some stipulations that I put on it because I am a Christian. I needed everything that we talked about to lead me back to Christ. I feel like one reason that Christians get all loopy about it is uh, and some Christians won't even call it therapy. They'll call it counseling. Like, sometimes it is counseling, but sometimes you, your counseling is therapy. And it, it's, it's stigmatized in that in that manner. And I feel like one reason that uh, Christians, as it re relates to therapy, and even as it re relates to counseling, where they get so woo-woo, is that there are so many therapists that infuse new age practices into their, into their therapy practice. Same thing with fitness. There are so many, you know... Um, doctors and personal trainer and physiotherapists that incorporate new age practices into their practice and so it's hard to like pick out the meat from the bones so with therapy it's no different I don't go I don't my therapist is not a hypnotherapist I don't personally believe that it is biblical or scriptural to do hypnotherapy although I hear people say that it's so beneficial and it's so healing because it takes it takes you out of your your body and out of your head and helps you heal and deal with trauma my my I guess rebuttal to that is the God I know is a healer and I don't have to be um, out of my mind or not aware of where I am in order for the Holy Spirit that's a gift that I know that's working inside of me to bring something to my remembrance because he's doing that for me right now. I think uh, the Bible tells us that we're supposed to be sober minded and vigilant, right? So any activity um, that I could like involve myself in that's taking away my diligence to be of sober mind and to be able to evaluate what I'm doing and what I'm listening to, uh-uh-uh. I'm not, I don't want to be in a state where uh, I'm really vulnerable to suggestion because my guard is down, because I'm out of my mind and out of my sight, right? So as it relates to hypnotizing and going to like hypnotherapy, I don't do that. I don't believe in that. Um, I'm not going to recommend that to anyone, even though I know there are some Christians um, who hate it. And I know some Christians who are all about it. Like people, <laughs> woo, that's why, like I said earlier, that's why people get so woo woo. Um, but I like to take all of the things that I do and I like to be like, okay, God, you don't specifically talk about hypnotherapy in the Bible, but what do you talk about as it relates to like healing? Okay, let me look it up. What do you talk about as it relates to counsel? Okay, let me look that up. What do you what do you talk about as it relates to like being having an altered state of consciousness? Hmm? Cause that's what hypnotherapy is. And I feel like when when we look at stuff around that, you kind of see that anytime it's anybody that's out of their mind, um, it's, it's always like, no, we have to cast thing, cast those spirits out. We have to pray for discernment. We have to pray for wisdom. We have to be diligent and sober minded. So that kind of like leads me, like sh shows me the path, so to speak. Um, but with all that being said, there was some criteria that I followed to find a therapist, right? Number one, I wanted my therapist to be a woman. I wanted her to be black and I wanted her to be a Christian because I knew those things were very important to me because I didn't want to feel like I was going to therapy and I was trying to advocate for myself 
to my therapist, meaning it wasn't a safe space to me. I didn't want to go talk to a older white man about the stuff that I'm happy that's, that's going on in my head as it relates to my career or that's going on in my head and in my family as it relates to racism. Like, I didn't want to feel like I, I had to, like, I wasn't free to talk to him um, and tell him how I felt because I didn't want him to be like, well, are you, are you sure you're not saying that the wrong way? Because then I, that would have triggered me. It, I would have been, like, filtering what I was saying to make it make sense. And then trying to teach you when I'm supposed to be in here trying to get healed. You get what I'm saying? So with me, what I did is I went on the Googles and I Google searched Christian therapist in my area. From there, I looked. I sorted through, you know, the men, the women. And then I sorted through, you know, black women. And then I got like this kind of short list. And it got to a point where it was just like, God, it's, it's so many options. Like, oh, my God, it's just so many options. This, this is a little overwhelming. And so then I was like, okay, God, I have to cash my cares on you because you care. I was like, Holy Spirit, just highlight highlight a few people for me. Just highlight people for me. And so doing all that, I came upon this one website. I came upon this one woman. I looked at her bio. I was like, okay. She seems like she would be a good fit for me. I set up like a, a free consultation, um, went in there, talked to her, and I was like, okay, this is a good fit. And that has been my therapist ever since. Now, with that being said, um, there are going to be moments in my life where I don't always live in Michigan, where I'm living in other places and I'm traveling. So I'm going to use the same process. And if it just so happened that the, the person, the first person I meet with, and have a consultation with I don't like I'm just going to keep asking the Holy Spirit to illuminate people women for me on my short list and I'm just gonna test them and try them out because the thing for me is for me seeing how beneficial therapy is for me I don't not want to have that in my life somebody who don't know me who don't know my mama my daddy my sister don't know my husband don't know my church don't know my background like don't know nothing about me so don't know nothing about me, but know God, and we can rock with each other. And even with that, I don't leave that up to chance. Like, every therapy session that I go to, before the therapy session, I have a moment with myself where I pray to God, and I ask God to just show and highlight things that needs to be addressed uh, in, in the conversation, and I invite the Holy Spirit in to not only help me be able to articulate or like feel through what's, what's happening, whether I realize it or not, but also for my therapist, for the Holy Spirit to be working in my therapist. So for her to give me um, insight, that's like a fresh rhema word from God. And I pray that, you know, none of the things that's going on in her life get, gets projected on me in this session and that she doesn't interpret things from her lens uh, even, you know, they try to be objective as possible, but that she doesn't like subconsciously project anything from her, her life, from her lens, from how she was raised and, and, and her philosophies on things on me in the session. I just, you know, pray for like purity and clarity and wisdom and discernment. And I just invite the Holy Spirit in. And then I rebuke the devil in any like the money attacks that he will try to come uh, and bring upon me, my mind, my emotions, her, her mind, her emotions while we're in the session. So, and I roll out. So one thing for me that has been crucial is a couple things <laughs> really that I've discovered in therapy is, um, number one, I hardly ever said that I was proud of myself. Um, it's, it's like I didn't give my room, myself room to say that I was proud of myself. And I did not realize that. There are so many things I did not realize that I've come into the realization of um, really since I've been going to therapy. And at the end of last year, uh, what kind of like heightened that for me is I had a conversation with God. And if you are part of my newsletter, you know this. If you're not, y'all, if you're not in my community, get in my community. Because I promise you, you miss gems. Because I'm not always setting up this whole setup to come and do a video. 
Like, sometimes I'm just writing. And, like, if you're not a, on my list and in my free community, get in there because you're missing gems because we do life together. We are transparent, real, and raw with each other. Anyway, so if you're on my newsletter, you know that it, it, in the fall of last year, I asked God to show me my blind spots. We all have these blind spots, but we are not aware of and it, it affects how we move through life. It affects how we feel about each other. It affects how we feel about other people. It affects how we negotiate deals. It affects how we date and how we eat and how we work out and how we groom ourselves and how we speak and how we speak about others and our ability to be positive in our mind or negative in our mind. Like, we all have them. And I got to a point in my life where I was like, mm, I'm really trying to die empty meaning i'm trying to go to heaven and god for real to say girl (laughs) i'm proud of you well done and i'm in the business of helping women influential women heal and transform and it's gonna be very challenging difficult hard for me to do that if i'm not also getting my life together because It's hard to help somebody when they're triggering you, right? You get what I'm saying? It's hard to help somebody transform when you, like, ain't right. And I'm not saying that you can't, because you can. But for me, I wanted it to, I want to do stuff from a place of healing and wholeness, not being perfect, not being perfect, but from a place of healing and wholeness and wisdom and I want to be able to do that with a lot of joy and happiness in my heart. So I was like, God, I know I have these blind spots because I feel like I get to a certain point and then stuff happens and I'm trying to figure out why, why I'm not making the kind of money that I I know I'm supposed to be making. Why when I get to a certain point, it feels like I start sabotaging myself, even though it didn't, it don't feel like sabotage. I'm starting to recognize that it is sabotage. Like why, when, you know, someone I ask someone to do something it's like it's so hard for me to ask them to do stuff for me when I have no problem doing things for other people like I was like I know I have blind spots and I know I'm sitting here trying to in my natural mind figure out what's going on and I'm missing some stuff so highlight my blind spots and not even just that like blind spots like I'm mistreating people in this way in that capacity and I don't even realize like highlight to me my blind spots and highlight them to me in a way that doesn't make me hate myself and I really I never use like language like that with God um but I needed to just be raw with him God show me me in a way that don't make me hate me because mind you I'm still working through uh telling myself I'm proud of me telling myself that I did a good job of not being so hard on myself. So I had to get real with God. Like, I want to see the, the ugliness in me, but I don't want to hate me because I'm, I'm on this journey. And I don't even want to say this journey of self-love. I want to, like, this, this journey of, like, exhorting my own self because I love encouraging other people. I love being there for other people, but it's just, like, I have to learn how to encourage myself. So on this journey to learn how to encourage myself and edify myself and exhort myself. So I feel like it's a twofer because I've been, you know, going to therapy, working through stuff in therapy. And then I like that was my prayer to God. Like God has been revealing stuff. So I hardly ever said I was proud of myself. It's like I didn't give myself wiggle room because it's just like, Instead of saying, Janae, I'm proud of you, I would say, it's expected of you. Like, you, you you don't get no round of applause. Keep working. Dig harder. And I can remember an exercise that she made me do. Well, she was like, tell me the stuff that you are proud of about you. And I'm crying. Like, because I did not see, I did not realize how often I did not say I'm proud. Like, I don't, like, whew, maybe on two hands, the amount of times I said I'm proud of myself. So that was one thing. Uh, Another thing, and this is very recent. It's amazing to me that I went through my entire life 
and did not realize this. Somewhere, the devil planted a lie, and I didn't realize it. And I allowed it to affect so much of the stuff that I do, and I didn't realize it. Like, I was in therapy like, oh my God. It's like I was seeing life with new eyes. Like three weeks ago, I was driving to therapy, and it was just like this heaviness that I felt. And like, I was like, ooh, today's therapy session is going to be interesting because I feel like it's some stuff inside of me, and I don't exactly know what it is, but I feel like it's some stuff that needs to come out. Like, I need to breathe, so to speak. And so... We start talking, and I'm like, yeah, like, I'm, it's, it's this weird dichotomy that I'm having between, like, feeling like people are trying to, like, run over me and, like, use me, and then me asking for help when I need it because I don't want people to feel like I'm using them because I know how that feels. So we started there, and as we're talking, I kept getting these random thoughts. And I now know it was the Holy Spirit, like, prompting stuff. And I was like, I don't know why this just popped in my head. And I was just, like, spitting stuff out. And I was like, yo, this is just a a, a bag, a a mixed bag. Because I feel like like the stuff that I was throwing out was so random. I feel like it had no connection. One thought to the next thought had no connection. I thought it was just incoherent. So... She was listening, she was writing notes, and she would ask me a question, and then I would think, and I would, like, dig. When all of the stuff started coming out the bag, what was at the the base level was that I was walking around with this assumption that everybody that I encountered thought that I was selfish. And I know that seems so like, oh, that's it. Like, but when it's you and you like pulling all this stuff out and you realize so much of how you have moved throughout the world has been around the, the thought that you think you, you think that your mom and your dad think you're selfish. And you think that everybody in your life thinks you're selfish. And for you not to realize that, like, you, you didn't live your whole life. And you realize something about yourself. And you like, you didn't, how did I not see this? Like, how did, how did I not see this? How did I not come to this conclusion by myself? And I'm so grateful for that. Because it's so much, it's like stuff that I'm like, Unlearning, like super, like God is supernaturally helping me, like unlearn it, cause I didn't, like I had that revelation, cool, get in the car and leave, and like texting friends, talk, talk to my husband, like, and I'm realizing, oh wait a minute, you don't gotta say that, you don't got, and you don't have to say that like that, getting emails, oh you don't gotta say it, you don't gotta say it like this. Because you don't have to walk around with this burden, this this hidden burden that they, people think you're selfish. Y'all, and I started noticing how many, like, knocks I was getting. A DM, email, conversation, text, phone call, like, knock, knock, knock. 
And then it was just like, I really, I have to relearn life from a perspective where that's not my truth. That's not my hidden truth. And I'm reacting. Everything is reaction off of that. And I, and I don't realize it. Right? So that, that's, that's two things. The most recent thing that I realized was a couple days ago, my husband was like, you know, you're, you're sad. Like, you've been sad a lot lately. I was like, hmm. Okay, let me, let me take that. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me sit on that. So we're in therapy. She's like, anything, you know, top of mind on your heart that you want to talk about? And I mentioned some other stuff from pre- previous weeks that I kind of wanted to unpack a little bit more. And I was like, yeah, you know, something that's hot and fresh that we can kind of hit on it, you know, right now is something that my husband said to me and I say it. And so she's listening and then we start to unpacking. She starts, you know, asking me questions very thoughtful, insightful question. It, it's how y'all she be asking the best questions, Chris questions in the world. She be asking the best questions in the world, um, because it's never judgmental. It's never from a place of her opinions. And I, I said this on um, Instagram, too, when I was kind of talking about therapy. Like, what uh, Iyanla does is not therapy. Um, and somebody likened it to, like, a strong awakening. And I kind of thought about it. And I was like, mm, I don't know. Because in, in my opinion, an awakening is when you get to a point where you're realizing something about who you are in here. And being ready to like address it and like go for it not being traumatized trying to get over trauma like what we did me and my therapist it wouldn't work if she was yelling at me like you need to get over it or this is stupid or and hurling insults at me it would not work I would not feel safe. I would not feel honored and protected and respected. And like I still had my dignity. So, yeah. So, she she asked really insightful and thoughtful and in my opinion, Holy Spirit driven questions. Anywho, so we digging in, we're unpacking it. And I realized something that I affirm so many people and I encourage so many people and my husband affirms me but it's more affirming that I want and I need from him because my number one love language is words of affirmation and when I am sad, my husband is Superman. Okay, baby, talk to me. What do you need? Well, you know this isn't true. Like, all, like all of the things, all of the things, all of the things, all of the things. And during this unpacking session, I realized that sometimes I have this affinity to, like, highlight the stuff that I'm sad about or the stuff that I'm upset about because in this angle from this you know vantage point he comes in and he gives me all this affirmation versus when I am baby today was booming today was great blah 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 he'll be like that's my girl and that's it and so that was like a shift for me like I have to with the help of the Holy Spirit reprogram my language and reprogram my brain And even my muscle memory to not automatically roll into, oh, just to get him to affirm me. But on this side of it, 
it's a it's a simple conversation and I need to highlight emphatically and enthusiastically all the good things that are happening. And one thing that the Holy Spirit revealed to me in the shower when I was getting out the shower yesterday is I was like said this joke. I talk to myself a lot and I joke I joke with myself a lot cuz I have to think through my thoughts and it's easier for me to think through them when I think through them out loud cuz it's like I don't trap I don't inter- I don't interrupt myself when I speak it out loud. I interrupt myself a lot in my head when I speak and sometimes that doesn't allow me to fully get my thought out. So it makes me feel like I'm chasing my chasing myself in a circle. So I was getting out the shower and I was talking to myself and I said a joke to myself. And the joke was funny to me. So I laughed. Like I said the joke and then I laughed and then I said a follow-up joke, which was funnier to me, and I laughed some more. And it's just like in that moment, I was like, Jenna, you are really funny. And I stopped. It was like it was like the, the Holy Spirit like caught me up in that moment. And it was just like, affirm yourself in that way. Like, affirm yourself in that way. You never affirm yourself in that way. And I was like, I was like, you're funny. And you are so much fun to be around. And like I started affirming myself in that way. Cause the only other ways that I ever used to affirm myself was like, okay, Janae, you can do this. Um, it's okay, just just keep working at it. You are loved, you are, God loves you, he sees you, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And God was like, the Holy Spirit was just like, it's okay for you to affirm yourself in those ways. Tell yourself that you're funny. Tell yourself that you are a hoot to be around. Like, tell yourself that. And so, I feel like, Although I did not go to therapy for this, you know, I went to therapy to get some help navigating my career and the emotions that I have around my career properly. Um, And then that spun off into, you know, stuff that I was dealing with, emotions that I had around um, my relationship with some of my in-laws, which spun into, you know, relationships that I had with my parents. Um... And being able to safely say some things that I feel without feeling, like, judged. Um, which then spun off into, like, my relationship with my husband and the relationship that I have with myself and my body. My weight has come up more than a little bit in my therapy sessions. My career has come up more, and like, more than a little bit in my, in my therapy sessions. Uh, and... Me and my husband actually did a video on the channel that we shared together where we share our lives together talking about getting out of debt and money. And I got emotional in that video because of some things that I had been talking about in therapy. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I will link that video right here. Go and watch that junk. But um, everything is connected. Everything is connected. Whether you are sad and depressed because you have a broken heart or, you know, stuff has happened with your family, um, your friends, your sisters, your, your mom, your dad, uh, whether you've experienced a, a loss in your life, whether you have been, you know, sexually assaulted or you felt, you know, scared or terrified because you have been brutalized by the police or randos on whatever the case may be on that side of it. Or if, you know, life is good and you just want to get clear perspective and you want to get um some help navigating new spaces and new territories that you're going through that maybe no one in your life has experienced you know maybe you're that first you know millionaire in your family and you're coming against some emotions and some feelings that you did not anticipate and you need some help to navigate those emotions whatever side of it that you're on therapy can be so helpful um, if done in the right way under the guidance of the holy spirit and you will quickly realize that everything is connected your relationship with god your relationship with your parents your relationship with food your relationship with your body your relationship with your career your relationship with money your relationship with instagram your like your relationship with nature your relationship with the environment like everything is connected everything is connected and sometimes you don't understand why you do the stuff that you do or why you say the stuff that you say 
um, because it's in a completely different area. Like maybe you don't know why you are like you are in relationships, but what's going to help you resolve how you are in relationships is maybe how you, um, view the earth and the environment. Like you would be like, I'm telling y'all, you would be surprised. So if you are a Christian, um, it doesn't always have to be inside of your church from your elders or your leaders or your deacons and your ministers. Cause sometimes you might not feel safe to tell them everything. And maybe sometimes all of them don't always, um, have the necessary tools like with the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is absolutely the right tool to have but sometimes even in churches uh, they're not operating in the fivefold ministries and they're not operating under the you know anointing of the Holy Spirit so they counsel from a place of their perspective and don't counsel from a place of the Holy Spirit so sometimes you just need a you know for the as much as possible objective third party who don't know you who don't know nothing about you um, who you can feel safe to tell stuff to. Because I, the last, and I told her this last Wednesday, I told her that God has had me be so transparent the last couple of years on the internet. And I really do feel like transparency is my superpower. I do. Um, but tra- like transparency with some tact and some taste. And so I have gotten somewhat used to being transparent with my feelings, with my emotions, with my tears. Because um, I used to fight so hard not to cry. When stuff would make me happy or sad, like I would fight so hard not to cry. Now I just let them just fall. And if I cry every video, then I cry every video. Um, but I told her, you know, I, I had gotten to a certain place of, like, being un- being comfortable being uncomfortable, but still really being uncomfortable being uncomfortable. But it was, like, a certain level of, like, familiarity that I had that I was kind of okay with. And I was like, the last couple sessions with you in therapy, I had felt so small. And so, like, seen, like, like somebody is piercing through you and can see, like, your deepest insecurities. And, like, I was like, I feel, I felt so seen, but I was like, but I'm so grateful um, because I rather feel small and seen and just so vulnerable in this moment um, just because I know it's going to make me better for my life, for my purpose, for my family, for my husband. I feel like I can... Oh my God, I'm so, so much better at negotiating my emotions now. Um, and that's, that's due in part to God and the prayers that I pray and seeking him, but also having my therapist as a support. Um, cause my therapist prays for me. Like we prayed at the end of sessions before, <laughs> um, she leads me back to God. She leads me back to scripture. She lead, like she, she'll recommend a sermon to me like, mm, listen to this. So yeah, God is just so good. And I'm just, <laughs> I'm so grateful for a growth and wholeness and healing. And, um, God is just so good. God is just so good and so faithful. Um, God, he just wants us so, he wants us healed. And I believe there's a lot of people out here walking around still broken because they're not healing. The Bible tells us that we need to confess our sins one to another so that they might be healed. And a lot of us walking around here with secrets and shame and stuff that we don't, we don't, we don't let out. Let it out. Let it out. Um, use some wisdom with it about who you let it out to, but let it out. Cause, um, I can promise you that no shame or no embarrassment or no insecurity, um, will ever outweigh what it feels like on this side of it. The happiness, the joy It's, it's literally like, I feel like every week as I grow in God and just grow in like navigating my emotions, I feel like. 
I breathe better. It's like I see the world different. And I don't take stuff so personal no more. <laughs> I used to take so much personal. And I'm, I guess I'm to the point now is it's like when people do stuff, I'm like, that really ain't got nothing to do with me. And if I feel a way about it, then I need to speak up and I need to say something. And that's been huge for me. Because uh, too often we, we gossip and we murmur and we backbite and we, we put it under the guise, the, yeah, the, the guise of um, I'm getting good counsel or I just need some opinion. But you just talking about folks. You ain't praying about people. And what you are saying to them, you are backbiting because you are not saying it to them. You're saying it to everybody but them. And you're gossiping because nine times out of ten, the stuff that you are saying is not true. But the reason that you don't know the 100% fact is you won't step up and put your big, you know, girl draws on and have a conversation. Um, I believe, I mean, there's a reason that there are many scriptures in the Bible that talks about, like, a conflict and comfort, confrontation. Because it's not that it's supposed to, it's, it doesn't exist, right? We are in a fallen world with broken, broken people. But he does give us, he gives us the tools um, to be able to navigate that with grace. Um, and yeah, sometimes you just need to let it out and heal. Because there are some conversations that we will have to have with one another. And um, in those circumstances and situations, it's best to just talk straightforward without doing all the other stuff. And sometimes it's just not necessary. Um but again, I say all that to say that I used to take stuff really personal and now I'm just, it's so much easier for me to be like that. What you experiencing and what you just said to me ain't got nothing to do with me and I don't have to take ownership over, over it and I don't have to take it personally. Um, but again, if it's something that I feel like, no, 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 I need to address this, I shall address this. And if it's something that I'm not sure about, I can go and get wise counsel without doing it in a way that is like slanderous gossiping, backbiting, and murmuring if I'm truly seeking help and truly uh, seeking, like, a wise perspective. So, that's it. Uh, I invited y'all multiple times to be a part of my tribe, my free, you know, online member community, a part of my email, because I'm so about getting me and the women that I'm connected with healed, um, healed in body, of ailments, of hormone issues, of gut issues, healed in spirit, learning how to, you know, talk to God and be closer to God and, you know, learn about the things of God, like speaking in tongues and getting strong mentally, like being able to like take thoughts into captivity and, you know, be, be good emotionally, being okay to express feelings and being vulnerable. Like I'm so about this life and I just empower and encourage and, trans and help my women heal and transform in that way as well. So if you are, you know, interested in being a part of my free online member community, I'm going to leave a link right there. Um, I would love to have y'all, love to have y'all inside of, of my, you know, my clique. Not, it's not really a clique. It's a, it's a, it's a community. It's a sisterhood. Um, so that's it. That's all I got for now. Until next time, bye. Be blessed.